shall be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you, Lord. It's time to come together, worship, praise your holy name. You say when two or three got in your name, you've been in the midst of them. Father, we now come in the name of Jesus. We have something, Father, just to continue this discussion of what we're talking about. And let's always remember that the reason for the season is the recognizing that the birth of Jesus Christ and the significance of even today, uh, coming up, I think, on the 21st, is the fact is that all the stars are lined up and and we're for, for the first time in so many years now, hundreds of years now, is to see the star that the, the wise men were, were looking at when, when we believe they were looking at when the coming, when Jesus Christ came into this world. Father, we got a lot of things going on. We got, we got this COVID-19, we got this political uh, unrest, we got the, the revelation of the, the nasty history that we have in our country. We got a lot of different things going on, but we know that you are not the author of confusion. And therefore, we need to keep our eyes and look up and realize that our hope, our expectations, and our victory comes from you. Father, I thank you for what you want us to do. We're going to continue to preach the gospel until you come back, until you take us out of here. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. So while we're doing that, Jimmy, the one thing, like I said, I was talking about is the the fact is that we're not toothless Christians. We are Christians with the weapons of our warfare, which is uh, the word of God. And, and I want us to start looking at the, the power that we receive on the day of Pentecost. And then the important piece is to have faith as a grain of mustard seed, right? And, 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 and I think that's very important because the just should live by faith, right? walk by faith not by sight so what i wanted to do is show the scripture starting off with and the rest of the scriptures are dealing with having that faith as a grain of mustard seed this is our uh, acts uh, chapter one and i'm reading the verse starting verse six to eleven uh, it says here when they therefore will come together they ask him saying lord Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? I put that sign on, Jim, because the fact is, it really is talking about the kingdom of God. You know, that's what we were talking about earlier in our, our, our ministry this year, is that the gospel that's being preached is about the kingdom. And we're living in a kingdom. And our kingdom is, is not of this world, but we are ambassadors in this world. But the whole purpose is, and even the children of Israel are looking at, is the restoring of the kingdom. But they wanted to restore to the kingdom of Israel. Well, God is ushering in the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and to the othermost parts of the earth. And when they had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and clouds receded him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up to heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. <laughs> and, and I thought that was appropriate, Jimmy, because the fact is that he's coming back again in the last days. And maybe even with this lining up of the stars, it's forced, not, forced to to remember he's coming back. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And, and, and therefore we need to, like you said, keep that focus of who we are in Christ Jesus and do what he told us to do. And understand that he gave us power. In my understanding, power is to go preach the gospel. And it, it, that, I think that's fair to say uh, that we have this power and this power to preach the gospel 
have, have to have Christ. So, so first I want to make sure anybody is listening. We have power. Let me see. We have power. That power is through Jesus Christ. Now, the next one I want to show, and then we get right into it. What I'm talking about is, as believers, we need to understand that we have to do things by faith, and we don't need but mustard seed faith. And, and, and many people think that's small, but I want to go ahead and read about what's happened and find the visions that we have through Christ. And then we're going to go into the next slide, which is talking about having faith to move mountains. All right. This one right here is called uh, Matthew 17, starting at verse 1. Uh, but as you back in town, you want to read it? Okay, Matthew 17, 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus alone. Say Jesus. Now, you know, before I go into the next slide in there, what I saw in there, first of all, was the fact is that that same uh, glowing in the face uh, and the shining of his raiment was similar to what Moses did when he first went up to the mountaintop. That's the first time that you remember his, his face was shining so bright that they had because he was in, in the presence face. of the Lord, yeah. right? And then in Revelation, we see a similar uh, appearance uh, when when uh, John went up, was caught up, and had that you know the Book of Revelation, and he saw Jesus standing in the midst of the candlesticks. And once again, his face his face was bright, and and, 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 and as bright as right as, as bright as the sun. Uh, and then the part about it was that when 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 Jesus when God showed up, I'm talking about just his voice showed up. Uh, these people became so afraid and fell on their face. And I also want you to know, even in the Book of Revelation, when John was in the Book of Revelation, when 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 Jesus first started talking, he also fell out, you know, and became afraid. And and I and I, I, I kind of wonder about the fact is that. Jesus, the whole purpose and the glory fact of God sending his son, which is God in the flesh, it, it allowed the interaction between man and God. You know what I mean? Because anytime when God shows up personally, you know, like in the, when the when children of Israel saw God in the mountain on Mount Sinai, what was the first, you ever notice the same pattern is fear. Is when, when, when we, we're actually in the presence of God, not through the Holy Spirit, not through, not with Jesus, but when the presence of God himself shows up, Jimmy, you know mean? there's this, this fear that comes in. Uh, and, I, and I always thought that was very interesting how that, that, that we're, we're so afraid and God is sending his son to show that I'm not here to hurt you. Yeah. You know, I'm here to, to, I'm really here to love you. Well, they, I, I, I truly believe 
that in the presence of God, all your 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 faults, everything that's unrighteous in you, Woo! is is so reveling. It's is so before you. Yeah. That you know your 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 fear of separation, and I guess the the realize the realization of them being separated is is apparent. Yeah. You know, and, and and I don't know. I know. Uh, I, I know. I, I think. I think it's. I, I can only imagine. You know, when I when I was, uh, when I was when I before I, I I gave my life to Christ, when I was out there in the streets, it would it would come across my mind quite often. Man, I do not want to die in this day. Woo. And the fear uh -huh. of not being in Christ was always was there it was just pushed down yeah yeah, yeah. you know but when 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 it, it came to the forefront there was a fear of dying in sin mm. so I don't I don't know if 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 that is the reason fear comes upon uh, them it's the only thing I can think of because when love, is there it just draws you to it exactly, i don't know anybody right. that that moves away from love right right so so that's just that's just you know uh, addisonism no no it's, um, it, it actually actually is uh is this bibleism because if you remember what did adam and eve do mm -hmm. after after they did what yeah right what, after right after once they were exposed to 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 or became naked because they disconnected from God. They the first thing they did was hid from God. And they even said they were afraid. Remember yeah. that? <laughs> he said, he even asked, what, what, what are you running for? Right? So or it seemed like there's this the, the the natural state of man outside of the presence of being in Christ. There's that, there's that, there's that historical fear of death in the presence of God. Now, it's interesting that even when John went to heaven, he fell out too. You know, when 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 God, when Christ actually showed up, and he he saw for Christ, he fell out, he fell out. Um, but. So I don't, I don't, I guess it still doesn't change the, once we're born again, we still don't, we still have that, 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 that fear of God. And you know, in the book of Revelation also said that when, when God was coming, the, the earth was so afraid that, they, you know, some ran into the mountain and they, they wanted even the stones to fall on them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that there's definitely a fear factor there. Um, but the rest of that I want to show point out from that those slide, like I said, was his face was shining as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. You know, it was like it was just light. We had Moses and Elijah talking to him, and then when that voice showed up, they all fell out. And then Jesus, who is who, who that's the importance of having Christ, is that he said, "Be not afraid." You know, he yeah. said that when it was in the uh, when it was in the boat, right? Fear not, yeah. right? <laughs> Yes, well, it, uh, at, at that particular time, he he at that particular time, he was the comforter. Yeah, yeah. Because he he comforted them in the presence of God. Woo. Likewise, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, uh, another thing that stood out to me in that particular text was. The fact that at the end it said, when they, when they looked up, yeah, there was no man but, but Christ. Right. So, the, the first thing that came to my mind is all the, this new wave thing that's trying to say that God is a sheep. Uh, uh -huh. They heard the voice, and yet when they opened their eyes, they saw no man. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they didn't hear a female's voice either. Well, that that's that's true. That's true. They heard the they heard the they heard, they heard the creation the creator, right? 
Yeah, they heard his voice, and they heard uh, they you know they seen him talking. Yeah, and he said, and then and after that, it's like this. So, like I said, they looked up. It looked like I think what was the uh, that vision ended once Jesus touched him. You know, and they they couldn't see. They didn't see nothing anymore after that. That vision was well. I don't think they it. And you know, when it says a cloud overshadowed them, I don't think they could see. Uh, they could witness anything but the cloud at that moment. Right, right. But in the midst of that cloud, there was a voice. <laughs> and, and, it, and, and based on what what is written here, right, it, it was not a feminine voice. Yeah, and and, and I, I know that's that's interesting. I guess I was not. Uh, I don't. I don't. But you know what God said, call the Father, right? That's also not fair. Yeah. 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 Well, that that raises a good question. Very good question. And I think that too is going to is is part of what's going on in the world today, which I've spoken on several times. Why is God the Father, and why did He send a male Jesus, a man? Why? 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 Why not God, a woman? And why did He send a female to deliver us? Why is it all male? Why is it male chauvinistic? Well, don't forget too, man, when the male was the first anyway, right? And why? <laughs> why all that male? Why all that male? Why not female? Because we were made in the image of God. Um, I, I believe so. Um, but I will say this, uh, uh, a joke I thought of yesterday. Uh -oh. Why didn't God use the funny bone to make women? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, y'all make good. Y'all going to fit some. Y'all going to fit ladies looking at this. So y'all going to fit. Let's say, look, <laughs> that's probably one of those rabbit trails that I don't know if we wouldn't even want to go into. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying, I hear what you're saying. Y'all probably going to offend women. And that was exactly my point. That was yeah. exactly my point. Yeah. Not to offend them, but to raise the question in their minds as well. With all the things that's going on in the world. Why is the God, God, the God, the God seen in a masculine sense? Mm -hmm. And why did he send a Maybe male to deliver? You know, why? Why all this maleness? Well, don't think, oh, Jim, just to throw that one piece in there, because, you know, in Genesis, it did say that God created male, male and female created them, that he took man as a male and female. I just want to... But even in that statement, Pastor, he said male and female. So yeah, even first, right, male... Right, the man came first. ...for the female. Right. And then he also said the second... Even in that sense. Yeah. And also he said the last so, Adam, right? Uh, yeah, the first Adam, then the last Adam. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I, I just don't want, that's a good rabbit trail, but I don't know if I want to go down that trail, is what I'm saying. I, I do want to go in this, uh, Brother Addison, if you keep on reading, there's the rest of that scripture on that. Check that out for me. Mm hmm. Okay, 17.9. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Mm -hmm. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise, shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Okay, before we go on, I have to bring this up because this, this is astonishing to me. Um... <laughs> Jesus said, he said, tell no man 
of this vision until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And and they just look right on past that. Right, right. I mean, <laughs> they that that didn't even that wasn't even considered. It that thought never resonated in their brain. They just went back. Oh yeah, to because, Elias. Yeah, because you remember you remember Peter when he said that uh, before. Cause this is, and well, I guess he must have said it before when Peter told him and said, uh, "You're not going to die." And he said, "You know, Satan, get behind me. You know, you're mindful of things yeah. of." Uh, of man instead of God, right? Yeah. I don't think they could receive the uh, death of Christ. Because they really w wasn't expecting him to die. Even though they heard him, he told him many times. They yeah, but that, that's him. what was astonishing to me. So, you know, not that they couldn't, they, they, I mean, this was a, a, a major event in their had to be. Oh yeah, that was a big one. You, you know, heard the in their God. life <laughs> to, to to see uh Moses yeah. and Elias before them and then to hear <laughs> the voice of God. Woo! A cloud just overshadows them. Right. You know, and then Jesus says tell nobody of what just happened. Yeah. Until uh, until the Son of Man is risen again from the dead. So in my mind, it was like, man, man, when can I tell? How long is that going to be? So I can tell somebody that. Whoa, I got to tell somebody, right? <laughs> and and so, it, yeah, you're right. It may, I think I think uh, God has something to do with that as far as uh, letting them just forget it because they dismiss it real quick. And they start focusing on, what about Elijah? And, and then the fact I was looking at uh, Brother Addison was, Elijah had come already. Yeah. But here's the piece I want to throw at you. And they knew him not. Yet he's supposed to came to do what? Restore all things, right? Yeah. And yet he said, I, but I say unto you in verse 12 that Elijah's come already and they right. knew him not and have done unto him whatsoever they listed. My point is this is did Elijah fulfill what he's supposed to have done? Or was it maybe when he restored things, he's talking about restoring the the the, the avenue for in the spiritual realm for the ushering of Jesus Christ. You, you see how I'm coming from? Okay, well he did, you know, he even said. John said, you know, I come to make way for the one yeah. to come be after me. Exactly. So, you know, he did. So it was, a, it was more of a spiritual thing, right? It was more of a yeah. ushering in and only for just Israel, too, if you think about it. You know, you know, he it had wasn't... people uh, repenting. Yeah. 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 Which is what Adam didn't do, right? We, at least, we didn't get a indication <laughs> Adam repented. So, yeah. so, so Elijah came to really just prepare the way for the Christ coming in. And then the piece that gasped me was, and they knew him not. And he said, likewise, were well, they gonna do the same thing to the son of man? They, then he was suffering. But now, the they are the religious leaders. They, and you know, if you think about it, I. The religion. Because they 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 were the one that that he suffered on. Right. As well. Which you know, they, they, they were the one that, that uh that persecuted him. You know. It was the children too, right? It's, it's not all the children of Israel, but a lot of them didn't uh, recognize the meter, right? Many of them didn't recognize him. So, well, I, I, yeah, I think those who 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 witnessed him and the miracles, you know, and those who heard the stories of the miracles, uh, believed that he 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 was the son of God. You think so? You know, that he was he would come. He was coming there 
to put them in in uh if they were gonna restore Israel to 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 reestablish the, the kingdom right of Israel. Not the kingdom yes. of God, but the kingdom of Israel. No, the kingdom right. of Israel. I think I do believe they thought that. Yeah. Um, though he made no efforts in being political <laughs> exactly. at all. Which is what they would Not, need, it, right? They would have needed yeah. a physical king like David to restore that kingdom. They was only looking for the inside, Israel. Yeah. That's all they were looking for. Yeah, uh, that's why they even asked John the Baptist, right? Are you are you the one? Are you yeah. are you the Messiah? And, and it's amazing that they they were looking for the Messiah. But they couldn't, they couldn't, they didn't know. They didn't know John. They didn't know. And John said, according to the scripture, right? That was Isaiah. I'm the one crying, I'm the voice crying in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. But you they knew him not. Jesus said he was the son of God, that he was the Christ, and they knew him not. Because we and the question is, is that something that can happen? even to us now. Is that something happening to us now that we don't know him? Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's happening. It's happening to, to uh, I believe it's happening to Christians, many Christians. Yeah. They don't know him. Right. They know of him. Right. But they don't know him yes. because they haven't established a relationship with him. Come on. They Come on. Re they receive him, uh -huh. you know, to to for for life and you know fire insurance. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, and I guess I guess they. I, I just don't see. knowing knowing Christ oh, and and not not understanding yeah well I tell you you know um, uh, first of all I think that we're gonna have to get together and uh, give Wilbert one of our old PCs or chip in and buy him another one because he's still trying to connect now and it's been like an hour and a half who's that second oh, Elder Johnson yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, he but you know, to, he need to restart again. Yeah, yeah, he need to do something. But you know, um, that's interesting in that all their lives they studied the prophets, the prophecies. They're the ones that the, by whom, as far as Christ came in their lineage, all their lives they were looking for, waiting for, expecting Expect Jesus. Yeah. yeah, and then when he came, they didn't even recognize he that he was who he was. Right. And I tell you, you know, and, and, and we're no different. And, I, and it's sad though, because they had decided, again, they had decided, again, they had decided and made their expectations of what they wanted him to be and yeah. what they expected him to be. Yeah. And from what they studied, what it showed he was going to be, they didn't have an understanding because when he came, because he wasn't what they expected, or the way they expected, they in their minds said, well, you can't be the one because yeah. you don't fit the bill. You don't right. measure up to our expectations. You're not what we were looking for. Yeah, and so right. and so, the question boils down to, is it possible that right now that our expectation of him, of his coming again, of his appointed people, could we also, because we've decided Certain expectations and certain things have to line up, have to be a certain way, has to be this, can't be that. Could we also be missing out because our expectations are so off track because we truly don't understand? 